Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this session, we will be looking at some of the very common interview questions that you can expect uh, in terms of AWS when you are attending an interview. So this is uh, applicable for your cloud engineers or DevOps engineer or anywhere you know we have AWS. So we'll, we'll look at some of the basic questions, some of the very common questions that you can expect when we uh, talk about your uh, AWS, all right? Now, once again, before we start off with the session, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Now, one of the very common questions that you can expect when we talk about your AWS is, you know, getting that basic understanding of what is AWS. So AWS, it stands for Amazon Web Services. And this is one of the very popular cloud uh, computing platform that we have. So it's one of the cloud service provider that we have uh, among the other services like your Azure, GCP, and then so on. So AWS is one of the very popular cloud service provider we have. And the AWS is provides us with a wide range of services. And these services, it includes storage, computing, networking, databases, among others. So it provides us with the storage option, your uh, databases, networking, compute, uh, content delivery network, among other services. And it also offers a flexible, scalable, and reliable platform for businesses so any businesses that you want to run and individuals to run their applications on the aws platform so this is one of the very common question that we get the next question you can expect is what are the different types of ec2 instances we have so uh, the, the same question they can also ask as what are the different instance types we have in ec2 now these uh, ec2 is one of the service one of the very popular service that we have in aws which is used to launch virtual machines so at any point when we talk about creating virtual machines or creating servers in the aws cloud we are talking about your ec2 service now this ec2 service it provides us with different different options uh, which includes your different cpu capacity your memory capacity and your network configuration which helps us to handle uh, various types of load so this different different con uh, configurations which is basically a combination of cpu memory and your network configurations all of this together makes up for your instance types so we have the following um, uh, options so we have the compute optimized we have the memory optimized then we have the accelerated computing storage optimized and then we have the general purpose so if you get this question you can answer these five types so once again you have the compute optimized memory optimized accelerated computing storage optimized and your general purpose okay these are your instance types you have under your ec2 the next question you can expect is what is s3 now s3 is one of the storage option we have in aws and it simply stands for simple storage service and this is an object based storage now what is object based storage that means you can store any amount of data you want in this s3 bucket but you cannot install any applications on them so this allows individuals and businesses to store and retrieve any amount of data you want from anywhere on the web so the whole point of this service is to uh, give you the storage capacity unlimited storage capacity so that you can store any amount of data however because it is object based storage you cannot install any applications on them right so this provides durability availability of your data and also the scalability of your storage capacity at a very low cost the next common interview question you can expect is what is auto scaling now auto scaling is part of your uh, ec2 service so at any point if you want to uh, manage the scalability of your server so if you want to scale up or scale down your resources based on the demand so if you want to increase the number of servers or decrease the number of servers maybe based on the load on your application you can make use of your auto scaling groups for that so this ensures that the application whatever the end users are trying to access this application always has the right number of ec2 instances to handle the load uh, of your user so imagine you have millions of users who are accessing this application so your application should have the right number of servers to handle this load and that's where we can make use of your auto scaling groups to automatically handle the uh, scaling up and scaling down of your resources which for example can include your ec2 instances the next common question you can expect is what is a vpc now vpc is all about your networking so vpc is the networking service that we have in aws and this stands for 
virtual private cloud. So VPC is a service that helps you to create an isolated section in the AWS cloud. And then you can start creating your resources within this virtual network. So now if you want to create like a private network inside the AWS cloud to create your resources, you can make use of your VPC service for that. So that's all about your networking. So with the help of this VPC, you will have the control over the virtual networking environment. So, you know, you, you get to choose, you get to create your custom network. So you can decide on the IP address range you want, the number of subnets you want, the route table configurations, the network gateways, everything will be under your control. The next question you can expect is what is cloud formation? Now, cloud formation is one of your infrastructure as code service that you have. So, infrastructure as code is a generic concept, right? So, at any point, if you want to set up your infrastructure using code, we can uh, we call that as an infrastructure as code. So, we have some popular tools like Terraform, Pulumi, which can be used to set up your infrastructure using code. Now, in AWS, cloud formation is a service which can be used as an infrastructure as code. All right, so infrastructure as a code, when we talk about that, cloud formation is a service that we have. And this service, it, it simply allows the users, which is us, to create and manage our AWS infrastructure by making use of the code. Now, we can write this code either in the JSON format or in the YAML format, and we can set up our infrastructure by making use of your code. So this enables the users to describe and provision the resources. All right, so any resources you need as part of your application, you can define all these resources in a descriptive template, like in a declarative template. And when you execute that code, CloudFormation will create the resources for you by using that code that you have written and it will create all the infrastructure as part of the application. The next common question you can expect is what is Lambda? Now, Lambda is one of your serverless computing service that we have in AWS. Now, what is serverless computing? So with your serverless computing, we as a user, we don't have to worry about the server provisioning, hardware, operating system, CPU, RAMs. We don't have to worry about any of those things. Everything will be taken care of by the service provider. So AWS Lambda is one of your serverless computing service that we have. And here as a user, we are only going to concentrate on developing the code, all right? The, um, uh, let's say a backend service code. And we don't have to worry about provisioning or managing any servers needed for running that particular code all right so aws lambda is a service that follows your serverless computing uh, model so users can use this lambda to run any code in response to changes to data in an s3 bucket or as part of a larger application so you can use it as an event uh, driven execution or you can manually execute it so there are different different ways that you can execute your lambda functions the next question you can expect is what is DynamoDB? Now, DynamoDB is one of your no SQL database that we have in AWS. So uh, when we talk about your databases, we have different different types. We have the SQL database, we have the no SQL database. This is a popular databases that we have. Now in AWS, when we talk about your no SQL database, then DynamoDB is the service that we can use. So Amazon DynamoDB, it's a fully managed no sql database service and this delivers reliable performance on low latency query so it gives you a good performance and it is a high performing database that is designed to handle large amounts of data at any scale so any amount of data on a process you can process it the next question you can expect is what is cloudfront so CloudFront, this falls under your CDN services, content delivery network services. So whenever we talk about your CDN or content delivery network in AWS, CloudFront is a service that we can make use of. So Amazon CloudFront is a content delivery network service that distributes your website or application to servers around the world. So this is uh, the whole point of this is to make your data highly available by making use of your cache servers. All right, so it helps deliver your content to end users with low latency and high data transfer speed. So um, again, whenever we talk about your CDNs in AWS, we are talking about your CloudFront service. The next 
common interview question you can expect is what is the difference between RDS and DynamoDB? So once again, we have you know two we have two categories of your databases. We have the SQL databases and then we have the no SQL databases. Now RDS it falls under your SQL database. So RDS it stands for relational database service and this is again a managed database service that allows users to run relational databases on the AWS cloud. So now if you want to run SQL databases, then we can go with the Amazon RDS service and then DynamoDB is a no SQL database. So on the other hand, your DynamoDB, it's a no SQL database service that delivers reliable performance on low latency queries, All right? So that's about some of the very common interview questions that you can expect in terms of um, AWS. Uh, for sure, you can expect some questions out of these um, uh, again, these are some of the very commonly asked questions that you can expect when you are attending an interview for cloud engineer or, you know, if your job description says AWS, then uh, these are some of the questions that you can definitely expect at a general level across all the services that you have. That's all for this session. Thank you. Once again, before you leave, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you like the video, leave a like and please share the video.